Hello everybody. It is the end of day number three at Yurt 2.0. As you can see, we now have a shower area with water catchment. I've got a bucket here um, to catch water from the corner. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. I also have a trash here that I need to get a um, big garbage liner because this trash can has leaks all over it. So I'll need um, a giant garbage bag to put in there so I can catch the water so it doesn't leak out. I also brought some water from um, Camp Freedom 2 from the hut. This isn't um, drinkable. This is um, rainwater that was caught in the water catchment, so it's not super clean. But I've been using it to shower and rinse off and stuff and do laundry. So I brought some here until the water catchment system starts working. This is my third full day and about to be my third night spending the night at um, Yurt 2.0. It is about 8, 8.30 p.m. The uh, sun is going down. It is starting to get dark. I know it doesn't show it on the camera. Um, what you're looking at here is my old... Um, USPS uh, uniform shirt here. I was using that shirt to clean up the floor. I know you can't see it too much well here, but the floor was soaking wet from the rain. I had made a, um, a window opening back there and um, rolled it up, but the way it was set up, water was coming in and leaked underneath the carpeting. So it soaked that whole carpet right there all the way through. Um, I dried it by using my old USPS shirt, which I've been using as a rag. Um, from, well, it was inside a little blue, too. I've always been using it as a rag since I lost my job with the post office. But anyhow, um, I basically was just um, putting it down on the floor, stepping on it, and, and so soaking up the water, and then wringing it out out here. And then um, just repeating the process until I got all of the water up, or most of the water up. So hopefully it'll air dry now. That was uh, quite a bit of effort to get it out of there because it was soaking wet. Uh, you can see that I've recycled the tiles from um, Yurt 1.0. This time, instead of laying them in on it, you know, right next to each other, I just laid them out and spread them out all over. Um, just to give you a nice surface to walk on. The shower area still needs a shelving unit to um, hold your um, soaps and other things that you might need. Shampoo or whatever. Um, but I've tested it. It works great. It's nice to be able to shower. I, um, I've been showering out here the first, I think this is my second shower in three days. First time I showered out at Camp Freedom 2, but I think it's um, more secluded out here. Camp Freedom 2 at the hut, people can just drive up here. They would have to drive up and then walk through the woods if they're brave enough to come out here. And maybe you might hear them. Um, you can still hear the others. It is the weekend. It is the 4th of July weekend, I think. So fireworks have been going off all weekend, as well as gunshots. Um, I hear the others out here all night long, driving around and shooting. So it's a little bit spooky out here. I just hope they're not shooting right at me, this direction. But they are fairly close. So weekends might not be the best times to be out here. But um, that's pretty much it. I'm just letting my towel here dry. I'll be bringing it in, as well as a shirt. I want to leave it out. Um, for mildew and mold and stuff to form on it overnight. So I'll bring it inside the yurt here. Um, as you can see, I have the tent set up uh, as a canopy bed. So the tent is set up so that you can go to sleep and feel a little bit more secure, uh, that the um, mosquitoes aren't gonna get you and snakes and spiders aren't gonna get inside and get you. Although I saw some ants got in there somehow. I guess they're small enough to squeeze through the little cracks. No see them cracks or whatever. And occasionally one or two mosquitoes get in when, when you crawl in at night. As soon as it gets dark out here, mosquitoes come out. Uh, the, the yurt does keep them out a little bit. So it's not like you have a million of them. But there's quite a few. Usually, you know, they come in one at a time through the little cracks. Uh, I do have the windows open right now, which I'll be shutting here in a moment. And turning on the lights. Um, we have uh, LED lights here that I'll be turning on soon. Let me turn this one on. Just push it in. And, you know, it'll light up everything. Um, got one over there, too. And as soon as I can afford it, I'm going to get two others. One for back there and one for over there. So you can really light it up in here if you wanted to have it nice and bright. Uh, eventually, maybe get a light out here, too. I don't know. 
it just depends on how much money we have. Um, I don't want to sink too much into this place because it isn't like a home home. It is a bug out shelter for me to stay here while I'm trying to get work um, and get my situation um, straightened out here. The main thing is dealing with the court, um, the court orders, the um, Department of Revenue, and um, trying to get work. So the yard is actually helping me because I can um, shower here and, and get clean and look somewhat normal. And I have my clothes here hanging up nice and neat and I can put them on and go to an interview or go to work or whatever and look normal. Um, the van itself is, um, you know, almost ready for live in again, but it doesn't have as much room as the yurt, which is why I've been choosing to stay here at the yurt. Um, that and I just wanted to um, test it out and fix the leaks and deal with any problems that come up. I just wanted to briefly show you some things about the yurt. Um, this isn't a full tour yet. I'll do one later when, when the yurt is pretty much done and I cleaned it up because right now you can see my crates of stuff here that I need to go through and um, sort and put some back into the van and then throw away some and whatnot. I basically had to move out really fast. So I grabbed up all my stuff and just put them in the crates and I have to go through everything. But I have put, um, I don't know, what are those called? Tre tres trellis? I don't know. Those things, mm, I think a mosquito just flew in my mouth. Mm. Yuck, bug flew in my mouth. Ugh. Protein. Anyhow, I put those on there to um, block the sun in the morning. That direction is east. So the sun rises over there and shines down and beats down on the yurt. And that wall gets really hot. So does the roof here. So um, I'm contemplating throwing some lines across the um, different trees and trying to grow vines that go across to help um, shelter the, the roofing so that it has some shade. This yurt, yurt 2.0, is better than yurt 1.0, obviously, but it's hot because of the location. Yurt 1.0 has a natural canopy. So, you know, the, the trees here actually help block the sun for most of the day, throughout the day. So, and, and it's also a little bit more open here, so you get more of a nice breeze going through, so it's a little bit cooler here. So this is actually a better spot for the yurt than... Um, 2.0 but the way things happened you know we ended up building that one first and then I'm building this one and pulling components from that one time and money permitting I may put up another one here if you guys want me to um, it'll be yurt 3.0 which should have even more improvements um, from stuff we've learned since building this original bug out yurt made out of fronds to one that used um, wood and fronds Yurt 3.0 would probably just go all wood, you know, and it would have to be financed by the viewers. But I would build it here and um, maybe even give it some um, furniture and stuff so that people can just come and camp out. Uh, and of course, you can also use Yurt 2.0 if I'm not here. Right now I'm using it as a bug out um, location just so I can um, take showers and um, cook and just relax and dress and go to work and or interviews and stuff. But once the situation straightens out, I, I don't really plan on living here, living here. Um, but, you know, it is nice to have a place where you can actually stand up because you know that my van is just a minivan. So there's really no room to do anything other than sit in it and lay down. And to do anything during the day, you're outside. Uh, you know, in and, and, and previous episodes when I was living in the van, I traveled a lot. I was usually at the beach or at the park and whatnot. But I was also working or, um, you know, had some cash. Uh, this particular go-round, uh, cash is extremely tight. So uh, I've chosen to bug out here at the yurt um, partially to film these episodes. So hopefully they'll generate some income. Um, also to learn some survival skills. And just to have a place where I could relax and not spend money on gasoline you know, all the time. Now, I do miss the beach and stuff, so um, I'm thinking right now, it just depends on what all happens, but my, my immediate plans is not to stay here permanently. I intend to stay here maybe a week, maybe two at the most, maybe one week. I don't know. You know, plans are so fluid, we don't really know what's going to happen. It just depends on what happens next. But, um, 
I will stay here as long as I can to save money because the cost of being here each day is pretty much nothing um, other than food and stuff that I go through and gasoline that I burn recharging my um, power systems. I have um, batteries uh, that I use to power the fan, which you see right now is mounted up on the ceiling there. I know, I need to turn the light on here. but um, So at night, I put it right on the, the top of the tent and have it pointed down so it blows right at me while I'm sleeping. So it's nice and cool, and as a matter of fact, it gets cold. For those of you who come here, you'll see those big white things right there on the wall. Those are hand fans that I made. You just grab them and then just fan yourself with it to cool down, okay? So I might even put the word fan on it so people know what they are and, and how to use them. Just, you just fan yourself. Um, but we do have the electric fan that runs off 12 volts, which I will probably leave here for whoever comes here. If you bring a 12-volt portable power, you can plug it in and um, have some cool air. I also have the radio, which I'll be leaving here, um, and the TV monitor. It's not really a TV monitor, it's a computer monitor, so if you have a computer, like a laptop, you can hook it up and watch movies or whatever. But of course, you're going to need a power source, so you'll need to bring your own battery. Um, and, um, you know, if you had a solar, a solar power system where you could charge it off-grid on the sun, you know, a portable one, you could actually stay here for an extended period. The only other thing you're going to need is food and water. Now, I have some of my food and stuff here, which... Most of it will go with me when I travel in the van, but right now it's set up for the yurt. Have some drinks and stuff. Um, haven't really been doing too much cooking because of um, lack of funds and not going to um, the grocery store, you know, because I don't have um, a cooler system set up right now, and the van isn't fully functional and ready. So I've been eating, I know you can't see it here, but mostly canned foods, um, cold. They're already pre-cooked, I just eat them right out of the can um like tonight i'm probably just gonna have some canned fruits um some pineapple or something so good thing is i think i'm losing weight which is good <laughs> i don't lose too much but i think um I, you know if i lose about 15 20 pounds that would be perfect but yeah it's looking pretty nice it's um kind of homey maybe i'll film it in the daytime so you guys can actually see it but I've got a tonight I plan on going through these boxes and consolidating things, trying to get them into the smaller boxes so that I can put them into the van. Um, basically clothes that I'll take with me. Um, some items I will leave here um, until I can get a residence so I can come pick it up. You know, otherwise I don't have room for it. There's just no room in the minivan to carry all the stuff. Um, I only want to carry like what's necessary. You can see that I brought the big John um portable right there the big john right there the big john thingy that's a portable dish i mean um clothes washer so i'm planning on washing some dirty clothes today you can see that pile right there you can't see it it's so dark but i'm gonna be um soaking it tonight i might add a little bit of soap or maybe no soap just soak it and let the dirt and stuff come off the sweat and dirt so it doesn't stink and just let it sit there overnight and then tomorrow I'll, I'll wring it out and air dry it um, basically, uh, I think your 2.0 is, um, awesome. You know, um, it took basically seven days straight to build it. And, um, you know, I'm just now putting finishing touches on it, like these tiles. And, um, improving the systems, the various systems, like the, the windows that can pop open like that. So Yurt 3.0, if, if, if I decide to build it, will have a lot of the improvements here. I may not get around to putting the grass up, you know, the, the, the grass for the sides and whatnot, uh, for the simple fact that I don't have the time. You know, I've got to um, put the energy into looking for work. So tomorrow, which is Monday, I hit the library and I uh, update my resume. I do court paperwork for the um, Department of Revenue thing to, con to contest it, as well as to ask the judge to um, reevaluate my situation. Um, and um, hopefully they don't jack the price up uh, even more. 
my experience in the past, some of you are like, why don't you ask for a reduction? I did in the past, and the judge didn't do anything but ordered me to pay a fine. And um, then told me that if the DOR wants to suspend my license again, then we go back to court again and do it again. So I pay another fine to the court. So, you know, that's why um, you didn't see me rushing to file all this stuff. You guys got to remember, this has been going on for seven years. So this isn't the first time this has happened um, where they threatened to suspend my license. I keep having to go to court to deal with it, and then they reset it. And then, um, you know, I keep having to go back to court and resetting it and resetting it and resetting it because that's what the system is set up for. It keeps everybody working. It keeps the Department of Revenue working. It keeps the court working. Um, the only person that it, it slows down is me because I'm constantly dealing with the court. Then when I eventually get a job, they, of course, garnish everything. Um, so I'm always struggling day to day, as you saw when I was, um, you know, like uh, doing my job there, even as a postal carrier, which um, I was a city carry assistant. Um, it actually paid pretty decent, but by the time they garnished the wages and, and the money was taken out for the union and everything else, there wasn't really much left. Um, I couldn't even afford to rent a room, you know, so I was living in the van while I was a postal employee, um, except, you know, I got paid and had money then, so I had a gym membership, and food wasn't an issue because I could always, you know, buy food. I could even buy pre-cooked foods from uh, the Chinese restaurant or um, from uh, Publix or Walmart or whatever. Uh, this go-around right now, I'm, um, you know... I wouldn't say I'm unemployed because the YouTube is um, actually employment. It's just not paying a lot right now. But thanks to you guys, it is doing better. The um, channel is getting a lot more views and growing. The earnings are starting to go back up to a respectable level. So if I can maintain this growth process of the channel, it could become a viable um, source of income. And then it's something that I can actually control, you know, unless YouTube folds. So I appreciate all of you who are watching the channel, all of you who are making comments, giving it a like and a thumbs up, um, watching the, the ads and interacting with the ads, clicking on them if they interest you and whatnot. Um, it's really helping. You guys are an incredible um, group. I also appreciate all of you making suggestions, although some of you making suggestions, um, I don't think you understand the, uh, the scope of actually uh, what's going on on this end. Those of you like Darlene, um, Sheila, and Charles, who, I, I guess, I don't know, some of you may not see, it, it's like if a person is drowning and you're telling that person they need to learn how to swim or they need to avoid going out to the deep end, you're not really helping because the person's going to be dead here in a moment. <laughs> so I appreciate those of you who... Uh, understand that it's like an emergency situation and that's why I'm building this shirt and who threw me some lifelines. Uh, they are in fact keeping me alive. Um, my whole budget for uh, survival for this month is about, let's see, right now I have, I, I was at um, $25 for the whole month that I have to make last. And um, Darlene just sent me another $20. So I think um, that gives me $45, which is a little bit of breathing room because I can spend some money on gasoline, um, which might actually allow me to live in the van for a little bit, or I might conserve it and continue to stay at the yurt. Uh, staying at the yurt, I don't really spend much gas other than to cook my rice in the rice cooker. Um, and when I do that, I'm um, charging my battery systems to run the the fan, which you pretty much need at, in Florida at night especially, um, it, it cools down, but before it cools down, it's really muggy and hot. And when you have the 12-volt fan running and blowing right on you, it makes this um, bearable. It's actually not too bad. And then later on, it becomes pleasant. Now, what I found is I, I can now take the radio inside there because everything's running on batteries. If I take the radio and I put it inside... Um, I can listen to the music. Uh, eventually, I'm going to try to get wiring so that you can put the fan, a switch or something, so you can turn the fan on and off, because usually in the middle of the night, it gets really cold. Uh, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> this thing that says apple juice, I know you can't see that bottle there, but the apple juice thing really is an apple juice. I take that inside the tent with me um, at night in case I have to urinate. 
So you urinate into the um, fireworks over there. You urinate into the um, the container and then um, dump it in the morning. So that way you don't have to get out of the tent. If you have to get out of the tent, there's mosquitoes and there could be snakes or whatever on the floor. I haven't seen any snakes in here yet. I actually haven't seen any animals in here other than bugs. So, you know, I haven't, hopefully we don't see any like snakes and spiders. I hate them. <gasps> well, I don't hate them. I just don't like them in there with me. But I've seen some spiders, but not inside here. But I've seen, um, I did see some snakes along the trail. A little black one with, um, with a, it has like a red or orange ring around its head. Do you guys know what kind of snake that is? It's like black with a red ring right at the, at his head. It's either red or orange. I don't know what it was, but it was small. It's like about 10 inches, 11 inches long. Yeah, this video is getting so long, I better stop it now. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, joining me. Thank you all for helping me. Thank you for your words of encouragement. Um, they mean more than you possibly know, especially right now. Because, um, you know, this is basically real life survival. Until next time, everybody, have a great day.